BYD is a crypto exchange on desktop and mobile where you can spot trade, futures trade, use leverage tokens and copy the trades of top trade. There's hundreds of crypto available on their spot exchange as well as a free test account so you can practice futures trading without getting wrecked. BYD Fi. Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. Just thinking about Bitcoin and obviously through that we can apply that information to altcoins generally speaking. I still think obviously there's a Bitcoin driven market. We've got the halving creeping around the corner any minute now basically. Uh, which adds an element of risk like no other really because it's a, basically a gamble you know we all know that the halving is supposed to be and generally will be considered a bullish thing given enough time but uh, is it going to be bullish the moment it happens probably not in my opinion but we'll see this time is different uh, let's have a look at traditional markets before i bore you to death with bitcoin i know that that's what you want you want to know about Bitcoin, but I think it's important to think about other markets considering they're all doing the same thing, which is so far consolidating. Mostly being driven by the Dixie, and the Dixie has pulled back a little bit. So we've had that pullback on the Dixie, 106.5, uh, with a view to make its way up to 107.8. But until then, we are consolidating on the Dixie, and it looks to me like the most obvious place for it to get a, a decent bounce from. So be the, this will be the next higher low. It's going to be around 105.3, or maybe even higher than that, since the 10 exponential has crept up above that. But give or take that mid 103 area and i think that's where we're going to come down to so let's have a think about s p so we'll start with the s p futures markets uh considering obviously we have to wait for americans to wake up don't we so um it's curling over still it's still curling over as far as the data is concerned it's not really corresponding to any major area of a horizontal so i wouldn't expect that to be a fib not that i really use fibs you can usually see these things stand out on the charts so what we see is a continuous downtrend with a death cross on the four hourly with rejections on the 10 exponential it reminds me of something else actually yes that's right a four hourly bitcoin there were the death cross and rejections on the 10 exponential so they really are two in the same there really is not much difference between them at all. The general direction is down for stocks and, and Bitcoin and crypto until further notice. And so what really at this point, what do we look for? How are we going to try and find and determine a bottom or at least a, an area for a bounce? We call it a dead cat bounce um, or anything like that um, uh, before the halving or even after the halving or during the halving or whatever. Because again, the halving for me is a non-event generally, but this kind of, it, it could be different this time. Could be different this time. ETFs, might, you know, they are the noobs, aren't they? Now the ETFs are the noobs. They're doing indiscriminate buying. They're the ones who are going crazy. So maybe they will buy based on any kind of uh, halving. And if it dumps after the halving, I would imagine they would buy because really that is the right thing to do. So, uh, yeah, uh, carrying on with what we see here, S&P does look like it wants to keep falling down. So where are we on the daily? Where's the next area? Uh, well, to be honest with you, it's all the way down here. We're talking 4,765 um, uh, and maybe a little lower if we're talking to the moving averages. So to be fair, the, the, I would say this has got further to run over the longer term. So we give it a few more weeks, perhaps maybe a couple of months, it will find its way to this kind of area. Um, and so with that, we should kind of imagine that Bitcoin's also going to consolidate with it, right? Um, and if we were to measure this move, just just to give you know, just give a little perspective on what we're talking about, we're talking a whopping five percent, basically five point two percent, maybe a massive eight percent from the current price action. So obviously that's big for the S and P, but it's not unheard of. These things happen. You know, it's not it's not anything that hasn't ever happened before. You know, it's not chaos. It's not catastrophe. And if you uh, want to talk about stuff that's going on in the world, you know, there is an element of doubt in that. There is an element of fear in that. And that's fine, you know, to, 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 I suppose, bear all that in mind when applying, you know, capital to markets. You obviously, you know, you, you want to be as knowledgeable as possible. And you, you don't want to be too risk tolerant, I suppose, in, in times like that. So, yeah, you're right to think about it. But I've thought about it and I still think money is the biggest uh, indicator of anything globally anyway right and i just don't think it's in anybody's interest anybody at all there is zero interest from all sides um financially for this to escalate and normally that is the bottom line i would say um you know what is to be gained here really nothing to be honest with you financially from anyone at any point uh, i don't see it yeah. So anyway, I'm not going to go into any further on that. That's just my take on it. Don't think it's going to go any further, but I could be wrong. I can be wrong. It's happened before. 
So um, back to the charts then. So we've done Dixie, we've done S&P. There's not much more to do on traditional markets. That's we'll leave it with it, with, with it there. And we've already hinted towards the four hourly on uh, Bitcoin having this. <coughs> excuse me, having this uh, <laughs> consistent pullback. But what do we see throughout the pullback on the four hourly? You've seen it. I've seen it. We all see it. It's bullish divergence on the four hourly and on the money flow index. So I would say that we are looking for a dead cat bounce actually at some point soon if we're not already seeing it. Uh, 59,500. I would be looking for a, a dipping down just below 59,000 before a potential bounce, which would be hopefully giving you the opportunity or giving us the opportunity to see a bounce up to the death cross, which currently the 200 exponential is 12.5% off of Bitcoin. 200 simple is 14.5% and the horizontal is 11%. Uh, look, it could, it, 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 it might already be performing this bounce given the divergence. This, this could have been the wick that does it. It wasn't a, a very strong reaction, and I, and I think the main thing to focus in on is uh, are we seeing anything similar to that for uh, S and P or Nasdaq? And we kind of are, we we are seeing it. It's not as pronounced as Bitcoin, but it is present. And um, so if we're going to see it anywhere, we should see it on stocks, and I think stocks will be the better indicator because they are the more dominant of the uh, you know uh, when it comes to um, volume so you know, this counts for a lot more than bitcoin and if this wants to continue down in this bearish formation which it is in uh, bitcoin will probably do it and hopefully bitcoin will continue with the divergence uh, and s p uh, can give us some divergence and a play which again would be a dead cat bounce a death cross um retest which gives you a massive gain of two and a half percent yeah that's right you can retire young on something like that but what I'm trying to point out here is that this is a downtrend on the higher term time frame. So I expect it to continue to downtrend anyway on the higher term time frame. So if you don't want to be making trades uh, on these little tiny bounces, don't do it. They might not happen. And even if they do, it's not, you know, it's not life changing gains, is it really? It's just bragging rights if you were to get it right. And me personally, I'm not particularly interested in doing that. I'm much more interested in getting in at a lower zone, lower areas. Uh, for more longer term trades which should take us well generally uh, you know i'm looking really to allocate quite a lot of capital to the markets um uh, through you know this year uh, to sell next year so you might call that a short term trade if you're yeah i suppose from a uh, from a traditional market sense but really that's a short trade really if you're thinking about certain gains that you know that my target's being several hundred percent on each one of those trades that's that's pretty sweet and that's spot trading as well that's not derivatives so Bitcoin, S&P, probably going to keep going down, make another lower low. But if you were to try a trade on Bitcoin specifically, around the $59,000 zone would be okay uh, to give it a shot at um, based on the 4 hourly and what we're seeing. Um, and again, it corresponds to this horizontal, which is this wick low. That's all it, that's all it does. My expectation is that we will lose this area at some point throughout this year and we will head down further towards 50000 and that's where I'd start to, you know, look at the state of altcoins because they're the ones I'm most interested in anyway. I've got plenty of bitcoins. I don't really want or desire any more of them. To be honest, with you. I think I've got more than enough. Uh, and and really, if I'm talking about trading, you know, over a, you know, allocating cash to anything uh, to hold for a year to eighteen months, most likely only a year. Um, then yeah, it's going to be altcoins for me. To be honest with you, it will be altcoins. Buy them low and sell them. Hopefully, after you know several hundred percent, maybe maybe even a thousand percent, uh, when they finally reach their top targets. But not from not today. Uh, maybe not tomorrow. Um, but using Bitcoin as a main major indicator to see if we can hold here and, and make an educated guess that altcoins are going to follow that and and print their lows. They won't always do that, but they might do. And if they do, then great. So long story short, down is the only way. Maybe a bounce uh, when we hit that $59,000 zone. Potentially you see an 11 to 14% bounce on Bitcoin, which again would be pretty big. Altcoins most likely will get carried with that. But I don't think that marks the low. I think that's just a, a lower low before the next lower low at some point this year, probably throughout the summer. Having again, is a gamble. So we just have to sit and watch and wait, see how that unfolds. But this is what the charts are saying to me. And so this is how I'm going to interpret price action. And my expectation is exactly what I've said. Uh, a bounce is uh, due soon, very soon. Um, and that bounce will be nothing but a, a lower high. Most likely get rejected on the 200 exponential for both S&P and on Bitcoin on the four hourly. 
Um, so that gives you a rough price of 66000 uh, and that would be the top target, really. I can't imagine it going any further than that. If it did go further than that, then we are looking actually to see a breakout to a new all-time high. Sounds crazy, but that is what it would mean. But until we see anything close to that, we should just assume that another low is going to be set, a dead cat bounce will kick in, and then a lower a lower high yeah, will, will emerge uh, to then form a lower low. So that is the deal. That is the actual deal. Right, I'll leave it with you there. If you want to join the Patreon, link's in the description below. Uh, Telegram, Discord as well. Um, other than that, I hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.